We spent the last year developing a real life version of John Wick's bulletproof suit. And this is one of the bullets that we shot at it. Now, before we start, I want to make something absolutely clear. Nothing is bulletproof. There is no such thing as a bulletproof vest. Bullet resistant is far more appropriate. But bulletproof sounds a lot cooler, doesn't it? Now, we've all seen movies featuring bulletproof vests. FBI agents, cops, SWAT guys, they've got them all. Even Iron Man's suit is bulletproof. But nobody, nobody has a bulletproof suit and looks as good as John Wick. Like, like come on, it's literally a bulletproof three-piece suit. And with John Wick 4 coming to theaters on March 24th, let's just say I thought it would be a perfect time to enhance my wardrobe. Tactical. How cool would it be to make a bulletproof suit? Is it even possible? I've learned to sew things together on a sewing machine, but I wouldn't really call myself a tailor. So for this build, we've hired the best of the best, a material science engineering student with extensive experience tailoring men's suits for Hollywood. They asked not to be shown this video to keep their identity secret because of their other clients. Knock it! When we're talking about bullet resistant garments like vests, it all comes down to layers of ultra high strength materials. If you think of a sheet of paper, for example, it's not very strong, but once you layer paper, it becomes much stronger. This is the basic principle of most ballistics armor. You've probably heard of Kevlar before, but not all Kevlar is created equal. In fact, the Kevlar used in bulletproof vests is highly specialized and manufactured in a very specific way. And it's not actually something you as a consumer can go out and buy. For example, this is over half an inch of Kevlar that we bought from McMaster Car. And as you can see, a bullet went straight through it. Lucky for us, we were able to work directly with some of the manufacturers of these highly specialized bullet resistant materials. And they actually sent us tens of thousands of dollars worth of the fabric that we needed both for testing and building of this project. We need to determine what our suit actually needs to be able to withstand. In the John Wick movies, there are a couple different suits, but for our purposes, we'll be focusing on the main classic evening black three-piece suit from John Wick 2. We see the tailor demonstrate the bullet resistance of the suit using what looks to be a P226, a classic standard issue handgun. And throughout the catacombs, we see the suit stand up to a variety of guns, most of which shoot 9mm rounds, but one that takes 45 ACP rounds, an MP5 submachine gun. So that's our goal. So how do we balance bullet resistance without sacrificing the aesthetic and flexibility of a suit? Now that's the question we need to answer ourselves at the gun range. So we've got 38 different samples that we're going to be testing, and I've labeled them 1 through 4, and basically all the samples in box one are the manufacturer recommendation for the number of layers of each material. So hypothetically, everything in this box should stop a nine mil bullet. Now what we've done is we've actually reduced the number of layers box by box by box, because what we're trying to figure out is what is the minimum number of layers and the most flexible material that still stops a nine mil bullet. Because all these materials right now, we're testing monolithically. So it means we're just using one material but most bulletproof armor uses composites. It uses multiple different times and different layer orientations and all that. But let's get started. <laughs> I guess our stand is a... Well, that's a good thing, we're only testing one at a time. Okay, we got a fail here. As fun as that was, our very first shot revealed a very big problem. Our samples kept blowing off the wall and the sample size of our fabric also seemed to make a huge difference in the result. We had started our test with manufacturer recommended layering, similar to what you'd find in a commercial vest, but some of the bullets just went through. We were trying to conserve the very expensive fabric, but ended up wasting it all anyway with a bunch of data that isn't even going to help us. So we looked into the NIJ armor standards and made our new samples 15 by 15 inches, the size they recommend for testing. We also revised our test stand to hold the samples better. This time, we're only going to be using the vector, since if it stops the vector, it'll stop the P226. We've also upgraded the elastic, so the samples are held a bit better, which hopefully means we'll be able to shoot it multiple times without having to mess around with the sample at all. And the reason we want to get two hits in is the problem is, if you only shoot the sample once, it could be a fluke. So just because it stops a bullet once doesn't mean it's bulletproof. That's pretty deep inside of me. There's the bullet. <laughs> it did stop it. The more pancaked the bullet, the better the armor is done. Because as you can see, this one's less pancaked and it almost made it through. This is my favorite material. The bullet never makes it through the front layer. 60 passed, 39 passed, 43 passed. Interesting. 
Woven failed. It was on the seam. I don't like those odds. Oh, 58, still passed. And yes, the quilt had failed. So I'm confident full failure at 16 layers and 17 is pushing it. 65, pass. 44, pass. But the white materials all have a massive back face deformation. If we held this super taut somehow, the bullet would probably punch right through. Energy is being absorbed as this is being taken into the foam. So it's slowing down and that's why it stops the bullet. If I wore this with a string around my neck and you shot me, I'm dead. Pass, pass. We've realized our testing method is flawed because this is not a pass. Once again, the data we collected wasn't very useful. We were getting passes from samples that probably should have failed. We needed a better human analog than pink foam. We decided to use oil-based clay. Again, what the NIJ standard actually recommends. Serves me right for trying to cut corners to speed up testing. Using the clay will also allow us to measure the back face deformation accurately, or the depth at which the bullet is stopped. Back face deformation is the reason you still break ribs, even when you're wearing a bulletproof vest. With this updated test procedure, we went back to the range and got our data for the monolithic testing. It's time to start testing the composites. We learned a lot from these samples, but the tricky part is putting it into a suit. How are we gonna create the ultimate bullet resistant composite? To offer the most protection, you need plate armor. This is what can stop rifle rounds. Once you drop to level 3A, now we're into soft armors. This is what most bulletproof vests are made of. But as you can see, it's still pretty thick and it's probably not gonna fit in a fine tailored suit. So we're gonna have to look at level two and below. These level two samples are recommended from the manufacturer and are quite thin. But at the range, we were able to determine some even thinner samples. The next step is taking these material swatches and making composites. Basically, our goal is to get somewhere in between our possible minimums and level two, keeping it flexible, lightweight, and able to fit inside of a suit. Let's start making some composites. The front layer is going to stop the bullet and the back layer is going to help reduce back face deformation. I was told that making armor is almost as much as an art as a science. So I don't think I need this. I'm just gonna try and make it look as cool as possible. When we went to the gun range, one material in particular stood out to me, and that was the woven Kevlar. It actually stopped the bullet in the first layer. Even cooler still, it left the woven pattern on the bullet. So let's try making a few samples with this as the top layer. Which one will come out on top? I have no idea. Have you ever Googled your name and were shocked to see your personal information exposed? If you haven't, do it right now. You might be disturbed by what you find. This information is available for anyone to find, including spammers and robocallers, all thanks to data brokers. So if you don't want your personal information being exposed and sold, then let me tell you about today's video sponsor, Aura. Aura is a powerful tool that can help keep your data safe and secure. Aura works hard to identify data brokers who profit by selling your information and will automatically submit opt out requests on your behalf. If you're still not convinced, Aura also monitors your passwords and social security number to see if they were involved in any data breaches and exposed on the dark web. If Aura finds any of this sensitive information, it will give you recommendations on how to secure it before someone attempts to steal your identity. With Aura, all adult members included in your plan are each protected by a $1 million insurance policy that covers eligible losses and fees resulting from identity theft. Aura's app also features a VPN, password manager, fraud monitoring, internet parental controls, and protects your devices from malware. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need, all inside just one app. You can use my link, Aura.com slash Hacksmith to try two weeks for free. You won't believe how much exposed information you'll find in those two weeks. Let Aura keep you safe. To set the baseline for our new testing method, we're using a level 3A vest that we've taken apart and put on top of the clay. So, let's see how it does. So it should have stopped the bullets, and it does look like it did. Note to self, gotta aim higher. It was really close to the wood. Looks like maybe 10, 15 millimeter back face deformation. Success is 44 millimeters or less. This one almost looks like it did go through, but I don't see a bullet there. I would say that's a successful test. So when we actually measure the back face deformation, you're gonna have to pick a reference point because look how much it bulges out yeah. from there. Stopped them all though. It might even be under 44 millimeters. Well, 
Now I hope this stopped it. In our previous test, it stopped it. Looks like there was a problem with our past tests. Once again, 25% success rate. <laughs> Passed last time with two shots. Well, 25% success rate, <laughs> two shots. Hmm, math. Doesn't check out. I mean, it does check out. <laughs> we just had great luck last time. Learning lots. <laughs> Doesn't look too bad. I might just be on the edge of level two. Turns out stopping bullets is not easy. Who would have thought? My arts and crafts, I don't think held up that well. We also definitely learned that there's a lot of variability in the bullets we're using. If they're packed with just a little more or a little less gunpowder, it makes a huge difference. There is a lot that goes into making bulletproof armor, and we're just scratching the surface. While we continue gathering data at the range, our tailor will start building the pants. We're not gonna make those bulletproof, but we are making them both abrasion and stab resistant. We did some quick tests with different materials and we found something perfect for protecting my legs. I also got fitted for a custom shirt at Jeff Allpaw Custom, where we studied movie stills to make sure we got it just right. They also had this awesome hacksmith silk liner made for us. Pretty dapper if I do say so myself. So this is our fourth or fifth time back to the range and we've almost finalized our bulletproof materials. Now we've had to make some concessions and we've decided to make the suit jacket slightly thinner and it's probably not going to stop the vector. So we brought new samples and we're gonna test against just the handgun to make sure that the, the blazer can stop a handgun and the vest can stop the submachine gun. That's what I like to see. Not great, one went through. So there's the variability in the bullets. You might be confident in your results, but the reality is you just got four rounds that maybe had slightly less gunpowder in them. So I'm perfect. <laughs> Literally on the outside of the material still. So I'm in faith that we can do it, it's just we want the suit to look good and not look like a sweater. It seems like we were a bit optimistic with our layups for the suit jacket. We kind of went on the lighter side of composites and even using the P226, we were unable to get 100% success rate, which means we're gonna have to refine those samples a little bit and come back again. But we did bring more samples for the waistcoat and we'll be going back to the vector to see if we can get a vest that can stop a submachine gun. Okay. Easy, right? It's just a submachine gun. This is the only one I'm a little concerned about. Yay! Woohoo! Congratulations, you only broke a rib. These two next samples are very special. They're identical in terms of material stack up, but one of them has been impregnated with a sheer thickening fluid that the Thought Emporium made for us. Hypothetically, the sheer thickening fluid should reduce the back face deformation. So the use of sheer thickening fluids in soft body armors is still under research. So this is really cutting edge. So I hope it works. Bullets you can just buy off the shelf aren't the most accurate. So we actually had some custom bullets made by my barber, which are exactly 115 grain with 4.5 grams of tight group powder. So hypothetically, these bullets should have almost the same impact, which means we'll actually be able to tell if this sample or the next one with the sheer thickening fluid is better. Ooh, look at that guy. That one went a little too deep for comfort. Alrighty, time to see what happened. I'm guessing it's probably gonna look very similar to the last one we shot. That actually looks pretty deep. Throughout all this testing, we've come to realize just how much goes into the development of ballistics armor. Sadly, our results using fancy nanoparticle shear thickening fluid were rather inconclusive. To do it right, we could probably spend an entire year just on refining those samples. You should, however, check out the Thought Emporium's video to learn more about it and how it could work. But we do have some good news. During the testing, we confirmed our final material composite for the vest. 16 layers of all coming in at less than 3.4 millimeters thick. So awesome. Our specialist is gonna start on the vest while we go back to the gun range to finalize the material for the jacket. So this is our fifth time back at the range and we've got our final samples and the hope today is not a single bullet goes through and we can get started on making this suit. One went through. You can really see like the, the Dyneema actually like handkerchiefed through the Kevlar.
107. Sample 109. Another pass. Woohoo! Look at that. I guess my biggest concern is when we finish the suit, we're gonna want to like unload. And if a single bullet goes through, we've lost. <laughs> 110. 112. What the? So based on the replay of that footage, the first bullet lodged itself in the bulletproof material. And then when I hit the material the second time and bounced and right into the fluorescent bulb above my head. I never thought I'd say it, but I'm getting tired of going to the gun range. We set out to build a lightweight but durable bulletproof John Wick suit and it took way longer than expected. But I think we've determined our winning material. The jacket is about 20 layers of a special Kevlar with every second layer cut at a 45 degree angle. This means we can finally start assembling the full suit. But first, a quick thank you to Urban Tactical for letting us use their range, Thought Emporium, and of course, my barber for helping us out in the testing phase. Now, Let's make this suit. If you want to help support the channel and own a piece of Hacksmith history, check out Hacksmith.store. We've got a whole bunch of souvenirs from this project, including a sample of the material used in the vest with a squished bullet and a continental coin. Check it out at Hacksmith.store. Here we have a jacket, sort of. In this state, everything about it can be changed. And that's important for me because I don't know how the bullet resistant panels and the wool are going to work together. We've got mock-up sleeves, we've got a mock-up collar, all of this white stitching is temporary and will be removed eventually, and we've added a lot of room in the seam allowances to make sure any adjustments can be made when we get it on James. This is a foam mock-up of the bullet resistant panels. Now in the real suit, it's going to go between the fabric and the liner. But what this one is going to do is it's just going to sit under my mock-up and simulate the thickness of the panel so that we can get a really good fit on James. So these are your trousers. I hope you're wearing hacks with underwear. This is your shirt. Just bring tie pins back. <laughs> this is some, uh, some weight. Ta-da! Looks just like the movie, right? It doesn't look bulky. I was yeah. expecting it to look a lot more bulky. This is why I have spent hours and hours agonizing over the pattern on the dress form. The suit's definitely a bit thicker than uh, the one in the movie, but obviously the one in the movie isn't real at all. But I'm pretty excited to see this thing lit up with some bullets and hopefully stop those bullets. So we learned a lot of great stuff from the fitting. We're going to nip it in in the waist so that James looks super nice. Um, and we also need to make some adjustments so that the wool and the bullet resistant layers match up so that Charles can take it, adjust them in software, and get those cut on the laser cutter. We've got the bullet resistant layers all sewn up together. I'm a little worried about how the Kevlar is going to interact with the wool. Mm. So that's something that is still a concern. Because of how thick it is, I'm having to use some very unusual methods. Well, I, I want there to be no wrinkles, right? I want it to lie as smoothly as it's lying right now, you know? I don't know if that's going to be possible with, with this Kevlar. Well, you can just do your best, right? Yeah, like I've been trying to think through all the steps, trying to like make sure every step is moving towards it having a nice shape, kind of struggling with where the line is of good enough. It's interesting because we're battling like functionality with style, which a lot of our projects are all function, no look, or all look, no function. This, we need both. Yeah, there's a balance to be met, as with all things. But 100% on both, or like, could we do like 75% on both? No, you can never get 100% on both. That's not an option. You always need to compromise. Yeah. And the, the compromise right from the get-go is we're putting like a quarter inch of plastic inside of clothing. There's only so much you can do. Yeah. And even then, you need to remember, 99.95% .95 of other people have nothing even remotely similar in experience. And we look at it and go, oh damn, it's a suit jacket, but it's got bulletproof material. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Yeah, whereas I'm seeing like every single yeah. mistake. It's pull the trigger time. Mm -hmm. John Wick. It's a John Wick joke. It's a John Wick joke. <laughs>
How crazy is it? This jacket will be done tomorrow. So that's four pounds of Kevlar you're wearing. It looks good. Yeah, that's a suit. You just look really buff. <laughs> Charles, punch me. Not with the scissors. No. No. Good afternoon, Mr. Wick. It's been a long time. Tell me, Mr. Wick, is this a formal event or a social affair? Social. And is this for day or evening? I need one for day and one for night. And what style? Italian. How many buttons? Two. Trousers. Tapered. How about the lining? Tactical. That was awesome. This suit is super flexible. I had no issue shooting that gun. And honestly, it just feels like a bit of a thicker, heavier suit. It does not feel like I'm wearing a bulletproof vest, but I do feel like super safe in it. And the mobility, like I can run around and be John Wick in this suit, like no problem. I think it's safe to say we definitely achieved that goal. But the biggest goal was making a bulletproof suit. So after almost a year of hard work, it's time to shoot this thing. Now obviously, I'm not gonna wear the suit when we're testing it because that would be insanely stupid. We've got this mannequin who volunteered to have all his ribs broken. It goes without saying, do not try this at home, do not try and make your own armor, and certainly do not test it. To start the tests, we're gonna be pitting our custom-made composite versus a standard bulletproof vest. We're gonna use a P226, which is the same gun they used in the movie. First up, the standard bulletproof vest. And now, ours. Let's see what happened. Oh, I'm nervous. You can see the hole through the wall. <laughs> but we knew that would happen because wool is not bulletproof. Let's take a look at this one first. Where did I even hit it? Yeah, it's right there. Ooh, it's lumpy. Yeah, it's right there. It did job, kind of to be expected. The pressure is on for ours. I can already tell. That's where I hit it. Get a little hole in the wool. Oh, I'm nervous. Did you guys not button up his shirt? What is this, amateur hour? <laughs> oh, I don't feel anything. The hole is right here. There is no hole here. I can feel a bit of a lump. We did it. It stopped a nine mil round. Oh no, his tie! I knew we should have made the tie bulletproof. And I can feel the bullet, it's right there. That feels like it didn't even go through many layers, actually. It looks like it got through two layers. Ta-da! Full metal jacket, nine millimeter round, mushroomed like crazy. Worked! <laughs> Woo! Spent a year building a bulletproof suit and it stopped, it stopped a bullet. Let's, uh, let's zip him back up. We're not done with you yet, buddy. Let's ramp it up a little bit. I'm gonna send three more downrange into each vest. Going on to ours. Starting to see some holes in the vest, but again, that's just, that's just the wool. We'll check this guy first. Oh, you can start seeing the holes here too now. It worked. I don't know what you're expecting. It, it is a bulletproof vest. And remember, we made the vest bulletproof and the suit jacket. So together, they're even more bullet resistant. <laughs> we are good. Still nothing. That's not even that much damage to the mannequin. It's literally like just a little deformation. That is surprising. Three bullets, zero holes. It's hard to see, but there's, there's no holes there. The vest is performing better than expected. But you might be wondering, what happens if John Wick's running for cover? Well, don't worry, we armored the back too. Look at that grouping. Right there, right there, and right there. Nothing. Just my sweaty shirt from earlier. So there was one right here-ish, there was one right here-ish, and there's one down here. And as you can see, no exit wounds. This is awesome. We still gotta, we gotta pull out the, the bigger gun. 
this is super promising, but we've only tested with 9 mils. Now remember, a 45 caliber actually has a lower impact velocity than a 9 mil. So based on this testing, it should be able to stop 45 cal as well. But let's ramp it up. We're going to use this Vector. It's the Canadian equivalent to an MP5, which is what they used in the movie Against John. Man, it sounds weird calling John, John Wick, John, John Wick, John, Mr. Wick. Yeah, not really. And ours. Looks like it's moved more. Ooh, the vest is pushed into the mannequin right here. That did some serious damage to the mannequin. There's one bullet. There's two bullets. I think we're good. Ta da! <laughs> it is leaving marks in the dress shirt, though. And I can feel a nice little, little bruise on the mannequin. It's looking pretty damn good. But this is a submachine gun, so let's use it like a submachine gun. Now we've put the suit jacket onto ours, but first I'm gonna shoot the store-bought vest to see how it holds up against a barrage of bullets. Oh! Oh! That doesn't look good. Oh! That doesn't look good at all! Oh my god! She dead! Are you nervous? I'm getting a little nervous. I don't know if I just grouped the shots really good and that's what, what did it. I'm pretty confident in our vest, but we, we put the suit jacket over top, which has another 20 layers or so of Kevlar. Both of these can definitely stop the vector, even though like the vest obviously stopped it as well. It's the moment of the truth. I'm gonna go for a glancing blow off of the shoulder. Left lapel. Right lapel. And just for good measure, the vest again. We definitely ripped the seam. Let's look at this one first. Ha ha! Suit jacket succeeded. The bullet is here. It feels like it's only through like maybe a layer or two of Kevlar. You can see the fabric has shifted in there. Hole is there. Let's check for an exit wound. No, it doesn't look like it made it through the suit. So it's somewhere inside of the suit because it didn't go through the liner. Well, it's not in the mannequin. Had to make some concessions and it's probably not going to stop the vector. All right. What about this guy? You can literally see where the bullet traveled. So it skipped up the Kevlar here, and I can feel it's all bundled back, and like the Kevlar is like parachuted around the bullet, catching it. And there's, there's no hole here, but I put one more shot into the vest. Risky, I know, because we already proved the vest worked. I don't feel anything. Shirt looks good. For a big fat W, boys. Taking home a chicken dinner. We set out to defend against a 9mm handgun and a submachine gun, and it stood up to the test. Huge thank you to you guys for following along on this epic journey. It took over a year to make this video, and I'm super, super proud of both this project and the video that we made. If you guys want to see even more content about this suit, consider becoming a YouTube member by clicking that join button next to subscribe, because we'll be posting an extended cut. I'll tell you, it is an extended cut. We have so much footage of the suit, and I'll do a Q&A talking about all the stuff that we didn't get a chance to mention in this video. Thanks again for watching, and make sure you subscribe. We're just getting started. <coughs>